Okay, so we know how to navigate around, we know how to connect to discovery, we know how to make an input file or how an input file works, and now we need to create a batch file or an sbatch file. And this is uh, going to contact something called the Slurm Workload Manager, um, which is just how discovery manages all of its computations and how we talk to it. So this is about all the text that you will use in your sbatch file. So I'll just break this down line by line. Okay, so in line one, this is normal for a bash script. Uh, this is just calling into the bash language. So this is, oh, which is basically just like your command line. So everything that goes in here, you could type into your um, command line and it'll be the equivalent. Um, right here, we designate our job name. Um, input, this is whatever input file you're going to be using. Uh, output and error. This is really helpful for when you're troubleshooting a job that's giving you weird errors. Um, if it's something wrong with Gaussian, it'll show up in your .log file. But if it's something wrong with how you're submitting the job or something wrong with uh, the network, then it'll be shown in one of these two files. Uh, the partition is which partition of computers you're going to use. Um, I would use short, but you can look online for more information on that time 24 hours most this partition has a time limit of 24 hours so you have to specify that in here um, then we have one computer and n tasks equals 16 which is um, telling uh, slurm that you want to use or you want to allocate 16 processors which now you know, your input file wants 16 processors and you will be allocating 16 processors so it'll marry together Okay, and then the export line, this is where you're going to specify your working directory, um, in case you're not familiar with that term. That's basically if the program needs to create a new file, this will be the directory that it creates a new file in. And um, if it needs to look for a file, this is the directory it will look for the file in. And then right down here, we have time G16, and this will do the actual submitting of the Gaussian job, I would say, because G16 is the command to submit the Gaussian job. Okay, so um, here I have a test um, sbatch file. So as you can see, it has the .sbatch suffix. And it's just a text file, and it looks like this. Uh, so here we have the directory. As you can see, if we go back and out, um, that is exactly where we are. See, that matches up. Um, here's all the early information. And notice there are some things that didn't appear on here, like this memory specification. Um, so there's a bunch of other things that you can look up and add to here, like you can have it send you an email or a text message when the job is finished or runs into something. But yeah, this is exactly what it'll look like. And to run this, you would type in sbatch test.sbatch or whatever your sbatch file is. Um, I highly recommend that you name your sbatch file after your job name. So um, if it was like called 390 object, this would be called 390 object.sbatch. Just keeps everything neat. Now note that this requires that you have Gaussian 16 loaded on your bash RC or your bash profile, um, which I haven't gotten over yet. So this, if you were to do this right now, it probably wouldn't work, but that will be in the next video.